My name is Ron and I've been in the leather trade 73 years. The tools that we use in the courier's trade, uh, of which I am a courier, uh, are called slickers. Uh, well, that is the common name for them. They're actually sleekers. And the word is because you are sleeking the leather out, flattening it out, and taking all the wrinkles and all the imperfections out of the animal skin. So that's why these are used. And none of these will damage the leather. All they're doing is improving it and turning all the lumps and bumps and wrinkles out of the animal skin to flatten it out and make it smooth and shiny like we see for that piece there. This is a piece of oak bark and it's the heaviest, hardest wood that you can use for this job. And we use that one because the metal tools will damage the leather at this stage because the leather is all lumpy and bumpy and it's not flat. And our job is to flatten it out. Uh, we call it setting, setting out. So what you do, you get this piece of wood, the leather is wet and you set it out on the table until it's perfectly flat. The next thing you have to do, you have to take out what we call growth marks. Uh, you call them wrinkles in your skin. So all those have to be taken out. And this is where we use the next tool that we've got here, which is stainless steel. Now, of course, in the old days, they didn't have stainless steel. They had ordinary steel. And it was very, very difficult to use leather because if you put a piece of raw metal on a piece of leather, you'll get blue iron stains. So we were very glad when stainless steel was involved because that led us to use these instead. And finally, we come to this one, which is the most unusual tool that we used. And they're called pebbles. And the reason they're called pebbles is because that's what they're made from. They go to the stonemasons and these are sliced. They're cut. And what you do, you finish up with something like that, from that. This is the bridal workshop where we would make all manner of things using straps and the like, uh, not only for the equestrian trade, but also for the light leather goods. Uh, that would include handbags with their straps and other items like that, smaller items like purses and wallets. And uh, the tools that I have spread in front of me would also be used for these other goods. Uh, having received the finished leather from the courier, I'm now going to cut a strip of leather to make our dog collar with, using a safety knife, which we call a plow gauge. And all these tools, incidentally, uh, are still made and sold in and around Warsaw. The plow gauge is so called because the blade is shaped like the farmer's plow. This is a pretty old tool with uh, imperial measurement, but it's been set to about two and a half centimetres. If I keep the leather in line with the guide on the tool and go along its straight edge, it will help cut a nice neat strip. This is the traditional leather worker's knife, which we call a round knife. It's razor sharp all along the edge. And I'm going to use that, rocking it to and fro, to cut the pointed tip we need at the end of our collar to enable the buckle to go through. Now, having cut the strip of leather, I've made a rough or sharp edge which would irritate the dog's neck and I'm going to remove that using an edge shave. This we can see has got a little forked end which is sharpened. I'm going to hold it at an angle of about 45 degrees and lift it up and down to find the cutting edge. And I don't have to press too hard for this, just gently glide it along. Turn it around now and do the 
other side. Now in the absence of stitching, normally we would make a line along the edge of the leather which is called a crease and the tool used to do that we also call a crease. This is a shoulder crease, it's rested against the shoulder of the user and guided along the edge of the leather. Now because this leather isn't thick enough to use this particular tool I'm going to use a handheld crease which I hold as if I'm going to thump the desk and apply a lot of pressure to make that line. Well I'm now going to use the dividers to mark the spacing for the holes we will need on the collar. I'm going to start about four centimeters in and try and get these right down the middle of the collar. To make the holes we use punches. Uh, punches are hollow so they won't get blocked up. They come in various sizes and shapes and this one is a round punch. It's marked at size 4. I'm going to take a mallet and place the punch where I've marked one of my holes. When I hit it with the mallet, the sharp end of the tool will go into the soft lead and won't go blunt. I'm now going to take another punch which is called a crew punch and we believe it is named after a signal man's whistle. Uh, crew being the place where the railway industry was centred upon in Victorian days. And this is to make the hole for where we're going to fit later the buckle. I'm going to make my hole about four centimetres in from the end And now I'm going to take the pricking iron, which is to mark where the stitches will be later when the buckle is sewn on. Now, this is not meant to go through the leather, but simply to mark the spacings. And then on the opposite side, I need the corresponding markings. And let's just test that the buckle will indeed thread on. The tongue poking through the hole made with the crew punch and the roller goes at the top to alleviate wear on the leather. Uh, before I pass it on to the hand stitcher for securing the buckle on, I'm just going to use the rubbing stick to give a nice flat shiny finish to those open fibres where I've been cutting. Now I'm in the process of stitching this dog collar. Just place it in the clams. It holds together. I've got my um, foot in the stirrup. Get my thread. Cut it to length. Gauge how much you need. And just cover it with beeswax. And that helps to weather the thread and to strengthen it as well. Then. I bodge the leather 
and then level up with the needles cross over the needles and that makes a binding over stitch and that keeps it firmly together and now my second stitch pushing the left needle in so far bringing the right needle through crossing over the thread to knot each stitch and the same again bodging with the awl using the ockle which is on my finger to push through the needle which prevents any damage to your hand so there and then back through pulled nice and tight and coming up to the last stitch now I've been doing this since 1971 <laughs> I'm retired now but um, I have worked in the pet products industry as well cat collars, dog collars, leads and I've also done uh, rock climbing harnesses uh, falconers gloves and um, the hoods for the falcons I've made those and even trapeze artist harnesses for the circus so uh, I've done quite a bit <laughs> and then we're finishing off with crossover stitch one two and then going back on ourselves through a couple of stitches and then we use the knife to trim and we've got our completed collar all done.